Hey guys, Dimitri here for Roofing Insights, actually for one of our jobs for Stormbrook Roofing. Today we decided to show you what it takes to install asphalt shingles in 2018. In the last 10 years, the roofing industry evolved a lot. There's a lot of things have changed and we see there's a lot of outdated information on YouTube and on different websites. A lot of guys still installing the roofs old school. So we wanna show the way, what does it take to install good quality roof in 2018? So first thing first, guys, you always wanna start with a complete tear off of existing systems. I see in a lot of um, parts of the country in Canada uh, as well, a lot of roofers simply going over the shingles. Unfortunately, it's not recommended by almost any manufacturer and also it's illegal, it's against the code in a lot of cities. So what's happening is a lot of roofers to save the cost for the homeowners, they simply going over existing. The problem with that is they cannot inspect the rotted plywood underneath. They cannot see the spacing. They cannot see ventilation. They cannot see uh, the plywood or RSB or how that roof system was built. And for those reasons, nobody is recommending that on manufacturer side. Uh, also, cities will not uh, close the premise if they don't see what's underneath. In order to install good quality roofing system, you do want to uh, completely re remove it all the way to the bare uh, decking. We highly recommend. It's pretty much the only way to do the job, right? It's 100% to remove all the materials that's on the roof right now, especially uh, if product is very old you're talking about 20 30 year old systems that's been there who knows what's underneath you definitely want to check it all out second once you remove everything you want to make sure uh, you inspect everything you replace whether it's uh, OSB or uh, whether you're doing boards you want to make sure there's not uh, white spacing. In the old houses that have been built in 40s and 50s, we see a lot of homes with the really big gaps, half inch, five eighths gaps. Uh, that's a big problem as well because when you install asphalt shingles and your nails will not uh, go through the wood, it will go through those holes and uh, your roof will fly away with the winds because there is no nails that's you know, in the wood pretty much. So what's happening is uh, I see a lot of roofers actually still gonna go through and install and then when big wind comes in, it literally can lift up because there's not enough nails in the wood. So uh, that's different, um, definitely big no-no as well. So you wanna redeck entire house like that here in Minneapolis where we work. We, we would say every year, five, 7% of our jobs getting fully redecked. It's usually old Minneapolis and St. Paul houses and then after that uh, after you figure out your decking your spacing if everything um, sound good and looks good and you can uh, walk on it now and uh, it's all solid now you're ready to actually install your system the first accessories that you want to pay attention to it's a drip edge it's highly highly recommended to install drip edge on any roofing system doesn't matter if it's Ford 12 or like whatever pitch of the roof it is you have to install drip edge what it does the water if any water ever gets towards the end and start dripping back towards the house, it's gonna kick out of your fascia and keep the water away from your foundation, from fascia, from going to your siding and uh, your soffits. And uh, we see a lot of damages when people don't install drip edge. What's happening is water drips behind and start uh, making damage to the house, to the foundation. So drip edge is a must. And then what you do is um, in a lot, of, uh, especially up north, you want to install peel and stick or uh, ice and water barrier. Here in Minneapolis, we usually go with the two courses, uh, two, three foot sections uh, on something like this, but it's actually not going um, by foot on the roof. It's actually have to clear the interior wall. And the rule uh, up north, you have to have ice and water two feet behind interior wall. So six feet, what we have here in most uh, application is more than enough. So it's gonna do the trick. Uh, sometimes you have to go three and sometimes if, if it's less than 412 pitch, you have to do entire house with a peel and stick, uh, also known as a, a called um, ice and water barrier. And why you need that is uh, to prevent from any potential ice damming, any uh, uplifting winds, um, when water will be dry, uh, going for any reasons up, um, ice and water barrier will protect that as well. So the next very important 
uh, accessory in today's uh, asphalt roof installation is a synthetic felt paper. Back in the day it was 15 to 30 pound felt papers and now there's over 100 brands on the market for synthetic felt paper. Uh, really doesn't matter which one you use. Um, what's really important is to use the same brand with your manufacturer. This is Owens scoring system so uh, each manufacturer has own recommendations and each manufacturer these days wants you to use their accessories for the premium warranty and warranty is the key for asphalt shingles because um, if you want to do it right you want to register with the manufacturer for that manufacturers to pretty much own your roof in the future so if your roofing company is going to go out of business your manufacturer will come back and say yes you use all our accessories you did everything right roof failed you have a leaks we're going to take care of you now if you're going to go cheap and you're going to start substituting with the cheaper materials and just use a, a shingle from that brand and nothing else your warranty will be voided almost for any manufacturers out there so synthetic felt paper is very important it doesn't matter which brand but for the warranty you want to make sure you use the same brand um, we highly recommend upgrade to synthetic felt paper i don't see no reasons why not uh, synthetic felt paper is actually cheaper than 15 or 13 pound uh, old school paper and the reason it's cheaper because the coverage is so much more one roll of synthetic felt paper covers pretty much 10 squares these days uh, back in the day um, it would be like five rolls or, or five six rolls of um, a regular 15 pound paper and uh, you would have much more waste you would uh, you would have much more cuts so next guys, I want to talk about starter uh, shingle. Back in the day, I would say five, 10 years ago, it was very, very common when roofers simply would take older shingle, the one maybe just came off the roof or something they already have in a truck from previous job, they would flip it around and they would put shingle on top of it. While it looked good, and uh, people think it will do the job. The problem with that is the first nail of the roof actually would be about five inches from the end, right in here, right? So the problem with that, when you have a wind from here hitting it hard, you can uh, damage your shingle very, very easily because nothing here is actually attached. And uh, shingles, this seal right here, is supposed to be uh, um, activating uh, on the starter strip, well, the problem is when you flip actually other shingle, this one here, this strip will not be activated because you have granules here. So when you actually use starter strip for the starters, how it's attended by manufacturer, you're gonna nail it in here, which is much closer. And then this strip here will activate with the strip right here and you have much stronger bond at the front and uh, so you will have nails much closer to the end and you will have uh, nails still five inches here with a double seal pretty much one inch from the roof so it's much better protection for the first course and that's crucial because that's where wind uh, will be um, <clears throat> will have the most power uh, to try and to lift up the shingles from your roof so definitely don't go cheap i see a lot of roofers uh, still cheating to this day because um, starter shingles do cost a little bit more but again it goes towards that warranty if you did not use or your roofer doesn't use starter strip shingle and use anything else um, it's pretty much going to be um, affected your warranty right away and you will lose that warranty so do not go cheap on a starter shingles so OC has much better strips than most competitors that's one of the feature we really like about OC roofing systems it's really wide I believe it's the widest starter strip on the market uh, other brands have much smaller and it's not as impressive but anyway follow your manufacturer instructions when it comes to uh, uh, starter strips and the rest of the accessories so in the last piece of accessory guys it's uh, actually hip and reach uh, shingles so this one here is a pro edge pretty much every manufacturer has specifically designed shingles just for the peaks and that's also very important because i see uh, back in the day a lot of roofers have been cutting you know your three tap shingles and shingles uh, just from regular roofs so back in the day roofers were using regular shingles just cutting them up and making them their own um, hip and wrist shingles so now most manufacturers produce specialty shingles and I still see roofers do what they always been doing 
just because they know how. Uh, again, the problem is that warranty. No matter what you do, always follow manufacturer's instructions. So if manufacturers wants you to use their hip and rear shingles and saying that that's what you have to do for the warranty, I get it, a lot of guys, and actually I've seen it many times, you can go in and chop this shingle right now and make hip and rear shingle out of that or some other uh, three tap shingles. It's doable, it can be done, it's not right. You want to do what manufacturers want you to do. If manufacturers designed special shingles, which is hip and reach, you want to install it. Um, and I get it sometimes we have to fight insurance company. Insurance companies, for example, don't pay extra to install hip and reach shingles. Hip and reach shingles cost more. You have uh, $30 for regular bundle and you have $40 for hip and reach. It's more money. Uh, but to do the job right, you have to follow instructions. Uh, insurance companies or whoever is paying for the job have to pay extra for starters for hip and reach shingles um, because it's a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of extra work, but when you do it right, you're going to have premium uh, system, premium roofing system, premium warranty. So this is how you install uh, shingles in 2018. A lot of things changed. A lot of things are still the same and uh, hope it helps. Good luck out there. Make sure you're safe. Make sure when you get on the roofs, you buckle up. We're here right now. We feel pretty safe. It's a 412 one level house, uh, but I highly recommend tie down systems, uh, especially if you're a homeowner and you're not on the roofs on a everyday basis. I highly recommend you uh, think about safety first because um, doing all of this, whether you're doing demo or you're doing uh, you know, carry outs and, you know, bring all materials and tools to, to the job sites, it can be dangerous. You don't want to hurt yourself. Um, if you consider professionals, make sure you ask them during the interview, during the estimate process, what processes do they have as far as uh, quality control goes, uh, who does the job, if they are following manufacturer instructions, if they are registered warranties, because a lot of roofers, they are roofers, they know how to install shingles, but they don't know how to follow manufacturing instructions when it comes to warranties and things like that. So you want to make sure that your roofer have your best interest, not only for this year, but for 10, 15 years down the road, because your roof is not going to be there for three years. It's going to be there for 30 years and you want to make sure it's going to last. And if it fails, somebody is going to pay for it. And hopefully it's not going to be you. Thanks a lot for coming, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe. If you didn't like it, subscribe anyway, it's free.